Man babies. Yeah, you know the type. That's cute. I remember when I had my first beer. <laughs> That's so funny. The last time I heard that, I laughed so hard I fell off my dinosaur. Stop. The common definition of a man baby is a childish, whiny man. Now, the internet has no shortage of these goons. But to find one on HGTV's House Hunters? Time to take a deeper look. Greetings from the Beehive State, home of very few man babies. Today, we're talking man babies. In particular, one giant man baby who found his way onto one of our favorite guilty pleasure TV shows, House Hunters. But first, a little bit of housekeeping. We've got the bent Missouri Meerschaum country gentleman with some six pence. Smoky goodness. Now, for those not familiar with House Hunters television on HGTV, the show takes you along with a couple or a family, and they look at about three houses, sometimes more, in a new city or different neighborhood, and they take you along for the journey. Here, the viewer gets to experience, you know, seeing new homes, different styles, and a new place that you may be interested in or had no ex idea existed to begin with. Now, the best part is the people. Sometimes, oh, it's just, you connect with them, Today, well, we loathe them. But that's all right. So let's take a look on who we're talking about today in the HGTV episode called Out of Time in Montana, aired this year in 2019. Hey, Mom. Hey, guys. It smells good. I'm cooking soup for dinner. I am a police officer with the city of Billings. I'm currently a clinic manager for one of our local hospitals. All right, oh, Ruby, get out of the way. We live in Billings, Montana. I grew up in Billings. Michael and I have two children. Olivia is 13 and Killian is 11. Okay, seems like a pretty nice, normal couple. We got a healthcare clinic manager and a mighty police officer. I want you to keep that in mind while we're going over this. This guy is roaming the streets, hitting the beat, taking care of those residents up there in Billings, Montana. So let's see what they're looking for. And this is where the drama starts to occur. It builds the tension when you've got two conflicting want lists and see how they work it out between them. And we're gonna go along with them to see the different houses. And I'm gonna briefly recap the thoughts and summarize it because hey this is fair use we're not going to play the whole entire episode we need to find a house immediately because as it stands right now we're homeless i mean what this is what the biggest do we need i just absolutely want to live on the west man, end baby, maybe I've we got to look ever with more than uh, one the area army. Of town. it's what i'm familiar with working as a I liquor personally store like clerk the style home because I mean, that's what i grew this up guy in takes the five bedrooms two and a half baths and then i put three thousand square feet because that's five. what i would like i want an updated got kitchen it, with stone countertops i want a separate laundry room well, this is your list. What about my stuff? Shannon is very vocal. It's, here's what I want, and I don't really care what you want. But I am making a conscious effort not to be the stronger decision maker guy. in the house hunt. What do you want to add to this list? Well, my studio. Where's my hidey hole at? Did I just hear that right? Hidey hole? What the hell's a hidey hole? My creative space, space for my drawing table, and, and always been partial to craftsmen. Anything with stone and wood really appeals to me. Brilliant drawing, Walt Disney. Brilliant. This is why you need your hidey holes for great artwork like that. <laughs> my five-year-old has better drawings than you, you goon. Okay, so I'm trying to crunch the numbers. I'm really stressed out. I just want to go over all of this together. Okay. Um, so our desired home price is 400,000, right? I'm thinking we're gonna have to go up, you know, at least 415, 420 maybe, especially finding what we want on the West End. All right, we're lit. We're ready to go. Let's start looking at these houses. House number one, 
craftsman. Now it's in the right neighborhood, slightly over budget. Remember, the man baby Michael said we could stretch it about 420. So this house is 425, well within the negotiation range. Fits the family, but no matter if it has an open concept, right neighborhood, this clip pretty much sums up everything you need to know about Shannon and Michael's house number one. Let's check out this room, though. What is this room? I have no idea what it is. Ugh. If we could put all of Michael's toys in this, this room. This is not, no, this is not. <laughs> this could be the hiding hide hole. <laughs> Definitely not a hidey hole. <sighs> Looking at the rooms here, they don't seem to fit what I want for my hidey hole. That's something that I want. There we go. No hidey hole. It's just not going to work. That's all right. We got two more houses to go. House number two. We're back in the right neighborhood. Shannon's got to be happy. This was pre-degree upon West End neighborhood. We got this. Billings, Montana. It's the nicest part of town is on the West End. That's where we want to be. Now it's right on budget. It's about 419. Again, their budget was 420. Easy number to remember. That's Barney's birthday. And it has a sp lots of space for the kids. Six bedrooms. It's beautiful. Giant backyard. Every kid's dream. But what does the man baby Michael got to say about this one? Ooh. I'm not bumping my head anywhere. Three bedrooms over here, but I'm just not, not feeling it for a hidey hole. I don't There's nothing really in this space that I feel would bring out my creativity. But why won't these rooms work for your hidey hole? I feel like we could work with the space at least, because I don't see what's wrong with it. I'm talking now, and so far it's been everything that you want. You're getting your ranch style, you're getting your nice kitchen, your open area. I mean, this basement is just, I'm not, I'm not feeling it. I want to get what I want to. Man, baby, just got tough as this search for the house just got even more rough. It's all right. We still got a chance. Home number three. It's your last chance, man. Two strikes. Pitcher's coming down on you. He ain't going to throw you a ball. He's going right after you. House number three. Ooh. Ooh. Are you in the West End? No. You're in the East End. You're in the wrong neighborhood. Oh, it's under budget. Oh, it's that awful split entry. Nobody likes living in a split entry. As soon as you open up the doors, you run into stairs. Just not acceptable. And, and the kids' rooms, they're small. Dad, you've got kids. They're growing. They want bigger rooms, bigger closets. You're not giving them that, but... Uh-oh. The man, baby. He likes the hidey hole. I don't know how this is going to go. It's going to be a lot of compromise. And I think Shannon's clip right here sums it up best. I feel like this house would give Michael everything that he wants. And I would be making the biggest compromise here. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a, a great you house. No, there's things I liked and things I didn't. Can you let me in? Now, before we reveal what house they chose in the end, we have to go over the top three man baby moments. Starting with number one, where HGTV bongs the man baby. Now, I didn't edit this clip in any way, shape, or form. Just to show you that the editors clearly know this guy is... I want a bigger room. I'd like um, a bigger closet. <laughs> Got it? Uh-oh, kids want something. It's their home, too. I don't think you're going to get what you want, kids. Number two. Man Baby gets 
mad. I still can't get past the fact that you are choosing a house with an unfinished space. That's a compromise, but we're spending less on this house than what we've looked at. Right, but when you have to do more work in a house, it's going to cost more money. I just really feel like I'm the one that, that would not be getting what I want in this. I don't know why you think that. There's plenty in that house that you want. We're running out of time. Finally, number three, the man baby shows off his magnificent Jedi mind sign trick. Watch this as he works his magic on his wife. So the hidey hole, um, I know it's unfinished, but once it's finished, it's gonna work out perfectly. I really appreciate the compromises that Shannon made. And it truly was, you know, coming together and, and communicating and figuring out exactly what we each wanted. Ultimate in your face, complete 180. Everything that she didn't want, she got in her forever home. I just really feel like I'm the one that, that would not be getting what I want in this. But you know what? That's all right. Kids be damned. Wife be damned. Neighborhood be damned. Resellability be damned. The man baby got his hat a hole. And that's all that's important for his drawings. And to cool off from being a tough police officer. Now, in conclusion, I hope all of you turn into HGTV's House Hunters so you can catch weird experiments of Amer American society in play, in motion. But I don't think I'll ever find another man baby like this. Except for maybe on the TLC Total Load of Crap channel. But regardless, this was meant to be serious. And I hope this guy is patrolling the streets of Billings to this day being an accommodating person and showing the exact same amount of compromise that he showed with his wife to all the fine citizens up there in Montana. And to the wife, God bless you for holding it together. And kids, you're going to hate living right next to each other. So I'm going to finish up this sixpence. It's absolutely delicious. And I am going to try to forget that I watched this episode several times. So on that note, may God bless you. May you have a great night. And in most point, happy piping. And never, ever say hidey hole again. This might be a perfect hidey hole. I'm just this, I mean, this is about the hole. same size as the one that you have now. There you go. So. I'm not. I'm not uh, buying that.